love when coaches, consultants, and professional service providers want to do big things in their business. They want to rise to the top and influence their market and the world around them. They want to have a greater impact and make a more lucrative income. Well, if this is you, welcome to Expert in You podcast, the show where I interview other experts and coaches, consultants, so that they can share their success strategies with you. We're going to talk about marketing and how to close more sales, how to get more premium clients, and how to really build your visibility in the market and scale your business like a boss. If this is you, welcome to the show. I want to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss one episode. Grab your coffee and buckle up because we are ready to give it all to you to help you become the expert and get paid as the expert that you are. Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you back to another episode of Expert in You podcast. I'm your host, Ann Carden. And this week, I have someone that I'm really, really excited to talk to. I have Ernie Martin with me. He is the founder and CEO of Receivable Savvy, which is a finance, accounts, receivable, and marketing consulting company. So, Ernie, welcome to my show. And thank you for, for having me. And I'm excited to be here. Yes, I know we are going to have some great conversation because you are doing some really unique things and you're doing something that I really want to hit on, which is what I teach people all the time to really niche down. And you have done that in marketing in the financial side of things. So we're going to dive into that a little bit more, but you also have a book that we're going to talk about. It, it, it's called Nobody Cares About Your Business. So I know this is going to be a great conversation. So uh, why don't you tell us how you got into what you are doing right now? Yeah, so my, my background is primarily marketing communications. My degree is in marketing. Uh, I've been doing marketing for 30 some odd years. Ha have had a chance to work with some great companies, Delta Airlines, Georgia Pacific. Um, also had a marketing consulting company back in the early 2000s where I consulted with former employers, but I also had a chance to work with organizations like the CDC, Kimberly Clark, um, some startups and some entrepreneurs as well. And so um, I've done mostly marketing communications, but I, I sort of stumbled into, if you will, um, this area, uh, this niche area of finance where it's called order to cash, which is on the accounts receivable side and great stuff going on on that side of the equation because there's accounts receivable and then the other side there's accounts payable. But on accounts receivable, it was ripe for research, which I'm, I'm a huge fan of research. And then I started Receivable Savvy because of that opportunity. And uh, so we do research and content development and consulting around order to cash and accounts receivable. And it is a niche uh, because we I, I've always thought of accounts receivable as sort of the redhead stepchild uh, in terms of its relationship with accounts payable. Most of the focus is on accounts payable. Some is on accounts receivable, but not enough. And so that's why I started the company. Yeah, I love it. So I have a question for people that are listening that may not really know what you mean by marketing communication. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, marketing communications can mean at least two different things. One is um, when I say marketing, I, I mean purely marketing, advertising, marketing strategy, brand development, et cetera. And then I also mean communications in terms of internal employee communications, HR communications, external communications, such as blogging, um, press releases, media relations, and things of that nature. So that's sort of one definition of marketing and communications. The other is the combination of the two where you're 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 leveraging blogs, other content for marketing purposes. And so uh, you've, you've got your marketing strategy and then those tactics that might include leveraging blogs or other content across social media. That's where the combination of the two sort of uh, converges and you use both marketing and communications. Great. Thank you for explaining that. So when you talk about being really in finance, what, give some examples of who some of those people are, are really the industry? Is it uh, people doing like trading? Is it people that are CPAs and accountants, finance? Is it, um, is it financial advisors? Where, where does that fall? 
Yeah, so it's and and that's a great question. So to, so to clarify, it's mostly B two B. Okay. And when I say order to cash, that is a component. Uh, it, it it's considered finance, uh, or parts of it are considered finance. And so order to cash means everything that a company does in order to sell goods or services to a customer and then receive payment. And so that can include everything from um, order management to credit analysis. You know, if you're if a company is looking to do business with a customer, hey, are they going to pay their bills? So mm-hmm. you do you have credit management in that process too. And then you have delivery, you have logistics, you know, that's that's a component of the supply chain. Uh, and then you have the part where once you deliver the goods or the services, you submit the invoice and then you want to get paid. And so all of those things really? that yeah, yeah, oddly enough, right? Oddly enough. And so any any small business knows that that's a key component to staying in business is if your customers pay you. And so and then so that that end to end process from order management all the way through delivery, invoicing to payment. And they're usually about nine to eleven steps. And so those nine to eleven steps are considered order to cash. And so there are different types of professionals. There are um, finance directors, CFOs at the top end, but then you have uh, accounts receivable managers, you have people that handle credit management, you have people that handle orders, you have people that handle customer relations, you have people that handle sales, and then you have people that handle what is referred to as cash application. So once you get paid, what do you do with that cash that you receive from your customer? So there, there are many moving parts within that whole continuum, but it's it's what most companies do in order to stay in business. Um, some know and understand that it's referred to as order to cash, but uh, a lot of people don't. A lot of small businesses don't know that it's referred to that, but that's where my company spends its time in doing research and content development around order to cash. That's that's awesome. I I love this, and and you're absolutely right that a lot of small businesses don't focus enough on the receivables. They have a lot of money laying out there that they're not collecting on. It happens all the time. I've worked with so many small business owners that we were able to put a lot of money in their bank account just going after what was owed to them. Um, exactly. exactly. So yes, that that is a. a problem that a lot of them have. So I like that we're talking about this. So Mm -hmm. let's talk about the book that you have. Um, Nobody cares about your business. So I use this a lot in marketing. Nobody cares about you, right? They only care about themselves, but let's talk about the book. Yeah. So, uh, (laughs) so the full title, nobody cares about your business, the eight universal marketing principles, every entrepreneur must know to make customers love their business. And so the the impetus for the book was, um, you know, I've done my share of consulting and working with entrepreneurs and small business owners over the years. And so um, it dawned on me that, well, I've got all this information, this knowledge and this experience. I should I should write a book. And so as I'm writing the book and I, I sort of do the first draft in just a weekend, I just, you know, knock it out over 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 the weekend. And one of the things that um occurred to me um, that I continually mention to entrepreneurs and small business owners is um, just because you put your shingle out on the door and you're open for business does not mean that everyone's going to flock to your business and then you'll be a great success. And so a lot of entrepreneurs and um, small business owners can't figure out why, you know, why am I struggling? Why, why are people and, and, and organizations not knocking on my door because I've got a great product and a great service. Well, you might have a great product and a great service, but the only people that are really going to care about that out of the box are probably your parents, you know, your spouse, your cousin, your college roommate, that sort of thing. And so I constantly tell entrepreneurs and small business owners, you have to make your target audience love your business. And there are multiple steps that are included in doing that. It's not just a hang out my shingle, and and then I'll be successful. If I build um, it, they will come, right? <laughs> exactly. You sort of the fill the dreams uh, approach to it, right? <laughs> and so, um, yeah. So I, you know, uh, the way I explain it is, unless you are selling water to people in the desert, or you're mm-hmm. selling oxygen to people underwater, nobody cares. Okay, nobody cares. <laughs> and it's it's the, the indifference is not unique to that individual or that company or that entrepreneur, it's universal. 
because mm-hmm. we've got so as as consumers and as potential customers, we've got so much stimuli that yeah. we're dealing with every single day. I mean, you think about, you know, when I was a kid, there were three networks on TV and maybe right. a public public television station, and that was it. And yet we listened to the radio a lot. And so um now you've got thousands of channels, you've got the internet, you've got social media, you've got all these additional stimuli. And what happens is most companies that do well, they understand that you have to carve out real estate in someone's mind. And so you think of someone's mind as an open field and say it's a hundred acres. You've got to carve out your at least one to two acres in someone's mind in order for your business or service to resonate with them. And then you can gain some traction, but it's a constant fight. And so you have to, you have to do things to establish that initial foothold in order to start to make traction, then to make sales and then to do well. But just because, um, so if, if no one knows about your business, um, no one's heard of you, and unless they have a significant and desperate need for your goods or services, then you have to go through that process of making them care about it and then ultimately making them love your business. Right. Okay, great. So you wrote the book because you had all of this knowledge and you felt like this could be a great benefit for everyone. Who do you basically, uh, who do you promote the book to? Who who would be a good fit for your book? So probably the best fit and, and the reason I, I wrote the book is really to target those types of individuals who I typically work with. Uh, I work with uh, quite a few entrepreneurs um, some um, more successful than others. Um, and so I also work with entrepreneurs offshore too. So there are a couple of other countries where I work with entrepreneurs. Their environment and their market may be slightly different from what's happening in North America, but the principles are the same. So entrepreneurs, um, small business owners, those who may be working for someone now, but they have a great product or a great service and they they're desperate to... Um, to leave the employer and to start carving their own path. And in the book, I identify, you know, who makes a good entrepreneur. And it's someone, and there, there are a number of different characteristics. One is you, 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 you got to be courageous and you have to have courage. And you have to be able to successfully deal with fear because fear creeps in for any entrepreneur, any business owner. And you just have to navigate through that, but mm-hmm. that that will be inevitable. There are also other characteristics such as um, you may be working for someone, but you really can't stand it. Okay, Or you may love your job, but you really feel that you're called to do something else mm-hmm. and you're called to carve your own path. You're, car- you're, you're called to leverage your creativity in a way where you kind of move away from the safety net to doing your own thing. And that really resonates with a lot of people. A lot of people thrive on the adrenaline that comes with, you know, if you don't do these things successfully, then you won't eat or you won't pay the mortgage or things of that nature. And they right. hate, they hate the everyday going into the office or going to their workplace and coming home uh, where everything pretty much may remain the same day in and day out. However, I want to hit on that really quick because you you bring up a really good point. A lot of people, they they love that adrenaline. They love being in charge. They love making the decisions. They love taking the risk and others do not. So here's a big uh, note to everyone. <laughs> Don't get into entrepreneurship if you are afraid to do things, if you are afraid to take risk, if you... Um, Absolutely. Yeah. If you can't make decisions, if you all of those things that it it requires mm-hmm. um, from entrepreneurs to be able to be successful. And I think so many people enter entrepreneurship and they really don't have a good understanding of just what it is going to take. And you even mentioned they like the fact that they won't eat if they don't make money. Well, that doesn't work for everyone. Let's face <laughs> right, it. Right. right exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So I think it's important for people to really understand what it does take. And you've been in business for many, many years. So have I. So mm-hmm. I say you have to, you have to have the courage, but you also have to be resilient and you have to be willing to push through things and, and get to the other side of things as well. So yeah. keep going. I just wanted to hit on that. 
Absolutely. No, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's it's not for everyone. It, actually, I would say it's not for most people. The vast majority of people um, should look to, you know, holding a job, whether it's, you know, remote work or whether it's contract work or what have you. And there's nothing wrong with that. A- absolutely. Everybody can't be an entrepreneur and everybody. Right. We need people that can actually do do things right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so. Because of that, and in in in, in 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 light of who my target audience is, the entrepreneur, the small business owner, most people don't have the experience in terms of how to do marketing and understanding what marketing right. is. And so similar to, you know, you, most people are not attorneys and most people are not doctors. I have a couple of friends who are attorneys and a couple of people who are friends who are doctors. If I have an ailment, or if I have a legal question, I may call them and say, hey, what do you think about, you know, this, this or, or or that? And so in the same respect, a lot of entrepreneurs start and launch their businesses or preparing to do so and don't have a marketing plan or marketing strategy in place. And so they're scrambling. And so sometimes they don't know what to do. They may ask a friend or a relative, or they may look at hiring an agency or no a consultant. Clue. Yes. Exactly. And so um, if they if they go the route of, of going with an agency, sometimes, you know, there's some sticker shock to some degree. Uh, sometimes they'll go with an individual who has marketing expertise. But mm-hmm. what I wanted to do with this book is everything that I've learned um, at, at a very high level with with some detail in some areas, I wanted to share that. So, for example, um, I, I, I started my career when desktop publishing first came on the scene with Macintosh, et cetera. And I had a chance, I was very fortunate. I had a chance to be trained on that and to learn it. And I sort of became my company's in-house designer. And so with that, you learn everything from design, layout, et cetera. And it's great if you already have a creative side to me, which I already did. And so, but you also learn about print production. And so print production has changed over the last 20 some odd years, because back then, you had to have these files and you, they everything had to be perfect from the fonts to the colors to the placement, everything else. And so now you can basically just take a PDF and send it to the printer somewhere and have something printed. And so it's easier. Right. Um, but in addition to that, there, there, there are concepts around brand building. There are concepts around establishing a brand and positioning your brand that most entrepreneurs are not really savvy right. about. Um, and so I walk them through the steps of this is how you, first of all, let's define what a brand is. And then let's walk through the process of building a brand and then positioning your brand. And once you do that, then you can look at, well, what kind of website do I want? Do I want just a a website that's a brochure? Do I want an e-commerce? Do I want to do it myself or do I want to hire someone to do it for me? Most people who, um, want to do and want to create and launch a website, they, they don't know that you need a requirements document at the very least. And the requirements document outlines everything that you want your website to be, what other websites you think are cool that you may want to emulate, what you want it to do, how you want it to interact with your, your customers, what the takeaway is, and everything in between. And so I lay out what a requirements document is. And then we go into social media, we go into advertising. The book also goes into public relations and a few other things too. So it's sort of a uh, a good cross section of a lot of things entrepreneurs should know about. Small business owners can actually use whether they want to do the marketing themselves or whether they want to talk to a marketing consultant or an agency. At least they can speak the language now. Or when an right. agency or a marketing person says, "Hey, here's what I want to do in this regard," they'll have an understanding of that if if they read the book. Yeah, I I love that it goes into the foundation of marketing. So many people. So a couple things I want to talk about here. And I actually just did a podcast on this marketing versus branding or branding versus marketing. I'm not sure which way I said it, but people don't realize that even though the brand actually supports the marketing. And so people a lot of times confuse branding because they look at Apple or they look at Nike or McDonald's. And of course, they've got this huge brand. But as a small business owner and an entrepreneur, you don't have that kind of money to throw at marketing and to to build your brand in that way. And so you really have to learn how to be able to market your business so that you can bring in the clients, the customers that you want. 
And I suggest that you learn the fundamentals of marketing before you ever hire anyone yeah. to help you with yeah. your marketing. Otherwise, you will be take you will they will not be able to do a, the same job that you can do in most cases, right. and you you will burn up your money. And how do I know this, Ernie? Because I did it for yeah. many, many yeah. years. It yeah. was the thing that set me on the course to, I need to learn how to market. I cannot continue throwing money at agencies, at people, thinking they can market my business better and bring right. in the, the business that I want. And so I right. had to go to school to learn. And I when I say school anything I could get my hands on basically sure. to learn Absolutely. about marketing. Now I've been doing it for years, but so yeah. it, there's so much to it and people don't, it, it's just, they're so confused by it. They don't know where to begin. And they're, they're even confused where they think their brand is marketing. It's not. Right. Right. So, exactly. okay. So, exactly. yeah, you're right. And so, you know, you, you, you touch on something that's, that's really uh, important. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, going to school and understanding the concepts of marketing. Um, one of the challenges, I, I see it as two challenges. One, one you touched on in terms of you're, you're throwing money at it. You're throwing money at it because you're not sure what'll resonate, what'll work. And so you're trying to, you know, throw everything including the kitchen sink at it. Right. The, spray the other, and pray. <laughs> exactly, spray and pray. That's that's good. And so the other component is um there's also a hesitancy with or with with entrepreneurs and small business owners because they don't understand the marketing. They think, well, why do I have to do this and this and this? Can't I just do this one thing instead of these three or four things? And it's sort of like building a bridge with 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 no legs under the bridge and you expect the bridge to work. So there are several components that you always have to put in place. And so not understanding marketing oftentimes leads to entrepreneurs and small business owners saying, well, I don't think we need to do that. Let's do this instead. Yeah. And you and I, I've gone through the process of here's let me walk you through why this is important. And so you then go through those educational steps, which sometimes can be time consuming because Sometimes time is of the essence. And, you know, if someone wants to go to market very quickly because of certain things going on in the environment or, or or the market, you want to move quickly. And sometimes stopping and explaining things to people is is kind of is kind of a tough thing. So you're absolutely right. Marketing and understanding marketing is critically important for entrepreneurs and small businesses. And they should have an understanding about it before mm -hmm. they start their businesses. Yeah. So many of them want to jump right to lead generation. They're looking for tactics. They're looking for how can I get out there and get customers and get clients, but they really, again, don't have the fundamentals in place. And it's why they burn up time. It's why they burn up energy and it's why right. they burn up money. Right. So Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I love that we're talking about this. Okay. In your book, you talk about transitioning from it's not about you to I have that on my notes here. So you want to talk about that? It's yeah, not it, about you ever. Yeah, it's um it's really about your clients and your customers. Now, obviously, it, it, is it about you? Of course, because you, you want to stay in business, you want to grow your business, et cetera. So th that certainly has its place. Your customers won't be served if you're not in business, obviously. But at the end of the day, your customers have to be happy and identifying who is a good fit and who you should be targeting is critically important because a lot of uh, organizations, small businesses, entrepreneurs target the wrong people. And so, yes. and this, this, this is true with B2C as well as B2B. Um, and so if you're targeting um, organizations, for example, I'll, I'll give you an example. So when I had my other, my, my previous marketing consulting firm uh, back in the early 2000s, I thought it was best to talk to small businesses who did not have a marketing budget and weren't doing marketing. And what oh. I found is as, as attractive as that may seem. Did you make any money with that? <laughs> no, no, no I, I did not. Um, and, and what I learned is it's best to target organizations that are a already have a budget already mm -hmm. do marketing and already understand the importance of it. And right. so as, as I touched on earlier, trying to educate someone as to why these things are important. And then after about four weeks of doing the education and explaining, having someone say, well, no, I'm not going to do it. 
it's a long it's, path. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And so um so th- so that's important to target the right customer or the right clientele. And it takes a little work. It, it, it takes um some trial and error to some degree, but also it takes a little bit of investigating to see who your product or service is ideally fit for, mm-hmm. who else is doing something similar to you. And if there are any gaps or areas where you could come in and fill that niche because it's underserved, that's ideal. So we we talk about, and I'm sure you're familiar with this notion of a, a persona. And so that persona is the right. makeup and the characteristic of a person or a group of people that is ideally suited to be your customer. And it's almost like when you're um when you're producing a movie, you're 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 casting, you know, your your characters. And so that's it's a similar concept in targeting your audience. You're casting your characters. You're saying, is my ideal character, is my ideal persona um a small a um decision maker in a mid-sized business who has authority over a budget, who can make the determination to do this, this, and this, and who who also may struggle to find solutions because of gaps that exist in the marketplace. And so doing some research and actually writing things down, because I'm a big fan of, if you don't write stuff down, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Writing these things down and sort of mapping out who your ideal customer is. Now, there could be variations from that, but that's a great starting point to identify who your target audience is, who you who you should be marketing to, and that'll help inform everything else after that. And I want to I want to add to that too. It it number one simplifies your marketing, mm-hmm. and it's less costly. Absolutely. It's less effort. It, your marketing can do the heavy lifting for you and yeah. can get you the return and the results when you get very specific and really dialed in. And so many people are afraid to do that. But you can run multiple campaigns, but yeah. you have to split the audiences. You have to make sure you're speaking to one audience at a time or yeah. your marketing cannot, it just won't work. The language will be off. The message will be off. Even the product could be off. So exactly. Uh, exactly. Yes. And you know, that's, that's one thing that I, I do that in my own business. I, I, I recommend that to, to clients and that you usually have two or three types of customers. Okay. And so in, in my business, there are, um, there are supplier organizations, and then there are also uh, solution providers. Okay. And so the solution providers, those are the companies that provide the software and everything else to suppliers, but then they're also suppliers. Mm -hmm. And so whatever marketing I do to suppliers, I can also do that to solution providers and vice versa. So I have to segment my marketing and make sure that certain messages and addressing pain points for suppliers is slightly different than pain points to solution providers. And and one thing I I do want to stress also is sometimes small businesses and entrepreneurs want to do the one and done approach when it comes to marketing. And, you know, it's the equivalent of, hey, all we need is a Super Bowl ad and then we'll be successful. Right. And, you know, it's, I have to explain that this if is only, a, <laughs> if only exactly, if only we had the money and only we had the opportunity to do it. Um, and so it's, it's an ongoing, it's a long-term proposition. And so some may see, Hey, we started this campaign three days ago and we haven't gotten anything yet. Well, okay. You need to run the campaign for three months or six mm-hmm. months, three right. days. You may not see anything because as we know, in order for your target audience, in order for something to resonate with your target audience, they usually have to see it anywhere from a dozen to two dozen times in order for it to resonate, in order for them to begin to take action. And even when that occurs, it's it's going to be a small fraction, but it's that small fraction that you want because all of this stuff is a numbers game. Okay. So if you're if you're talking to you know 10,000 people in your audience, if you've got a thousand who respond, and then out of that thousand, a hundred who actually buy then you know that can be a great return on investment depending on what you're selling but it's a right. numbers game and you have to keep that in mind and it is a long term proposition as well right and i think it's important for people to understand too that um you know paid marketing is not for everyone until they get their business to a certain level and sure. they know what they're doing i 
And I say that because I, when I was building businesses, I remember when I would run ads and I didn't understand marketing and I would tell my employees, I should have just thrown that money in the trash and lit it on fire because (laughs) that was exactly what it was like. It was like burned up money over and over again. But that was how I knew to market other than getting out in the community and doing that. And I did all those things, but I finally, that's when I finally realized, oh my gosh, I need to learn how to market because this is just killing me. It's just, yeah. it, and it, it sucks the life out of what you love to sure. do. Sure, it, it certainly can. And it, it's helpful to have a, a, a realistic set of expectations as to what your marketing will do and what it won't do. What, what it usually will not do is it won't make your company or service or product the greatest thing since sliced bread. Okay. That's, that's a long-term proposition. Coke right. and Apple are not where they are. That's the brand part. Brand is like the long game. Yes. Exactly. Um, and so these companies in terms of where they are, the successful companies, it took a lot of time for them to get there. And, you know, it's a long-term proposition and um, it's also something where, you know, it, it obviously requires some patience um, it requires creativity too. So don't get me wrong. It's not as if if you put out a bland ad or a campaign that'll resonate. Your your campaign also has to be creative. Okay. And that's where a good consultant can come in. They can help you to look at things in the market, if they, especially if they have familiarity with it. Then they can help you to develop and leverage and implement some very creative and innovative campaigns in order to start to have those things resonate with your target audience and then to begin to bring in customers and hopefully long-term customers. Right, right. All good stuff. Great, great stuff. Um, So what would you like to kind of wrap up the show with? Something that we haven't talked about that you want to share and make sure people know. Um, Well, first of all, I would always encourage people to buy my book. So that's, that's, that's first and foremost. Um, but for small businesses and entrepreneurs, um, if you really have a passion for what you're looking to do, what you want to do, what you are doing, I would always say go for it. Um, you know, life is short, and you know there are some parameters to keep in mind. You know, you know if someone's married, has twenty kids, and you know you're barely scraping by, it's probably and you don't have any funding or savings. It's probably right. not great to go into launching your own small business. Uh, it's good to prepare for it. So when I when I launched this business, I prepared a year in advance for it, not even knowing that it would be successful or that I would do it. So after a year, it's like, okay, this makes too much sense. I should go ahead and do it. And so I, I, that's what I would leave with small business owners, but primarily entrepreneurs is plan your work out, plan the funding, plan the marketing, plan yes. the launch plan who your understand who your target audience is have all these things in place when you launch because it's better and it's easier and it's less costly to do that before you start than after you start and there is going to be a period where you're not going to make money there is going to be a a period where you're just trying to to get money coming in but it typically will go out as fast as it comes in right, right. so you have to understand those things i i built seven businesses and sold five of those. So I'm no stranger to startups and I do not enjoy that phase. I just yeah. want you to know, which is why I do not work with startups today, because to me, it is the least amount of fun. <laughs> when you get the business going, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot of hard work. You're right. You're absolutely it right. And it's not for everybody. No one's, you know, it's, there, there are a lot of potential sleepless nights when you're, when you're, when you're starting a company. There so, are. Yep. Yep, absolutely. There are. So great conversation, Ernie. This has been so much fun. And absolutely, where can people get your book? Nobody cares about your business. They can find the book on Amazon. It's currently available in either Kindle or paperback. So awesome. and it's uh it's it's ready, ready for purchase. So I would encourage people. everybody to run out and get a copy. We will put the links as well in the show notes so people will be able to grab that. And then also, how can, how would you like people to get a hold of you if something that you said today resonated and they would like to reach out to you? Where's the best place? Uh, the best place is uh, my email address. It's ernie.martin at receivablesavvy.com. You can also check out 
Uh, my company's website, receivablesavvy.com. If you're in the um, supplier side of the business, if you're a professional working with customers, everything from credit management to order management to accounts receivable, feel free to uh, to take a look at our website and uh, reach out if you have any questions. Awesome. Well, again, we'll make sure that all the links and everything are in the show notes. And it has just been such a pleasure having you here. Such an honor for you to share your wisdom and your expertise. And I want to thank you so much. Well, and I appreciate you having me. I've, I've enjoyed the conversation and uh, I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to, uh, to possibly doing this again sometime down the road. Sounds great. Sounds great. Thank you, everyone. I want to thank you again for being here this week. And remember, sharing is caring. So if you like the show, share it with someone else who can find value from it. And also make sure that you like and subscribe because every week, new Expert in You episodes are released. So thank you. Have a great day and God bless you. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this episode, I want to invite you to go check out a free training that I have at expertinu.us. It is a training that I have on how you can get ultra premium dream clients, scale your business, get more freedom, and really simplify your business and multiply your money. So go check that out. And again, that is expertinu.us. I want to thank you for being here with me this week. I hope you found massive value. Please always leave a comment, feedback, or a question. We check them all. And I want you to go rock your business and make sure you join us again next week. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.